In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful buttercream ruffle cake. These have been so popular over the last year and they work great in a whole range of colours. I've got some really nice soft pink here. Um, when you're making buttercream, the most important thing is to make sure that you make enough if you're colouring it. So I've got a nice shade of pink here. I've used uh, one and a half kilos or just over three pounds worth of buttercream and that's to do the filling inside the cake. This is an eight inch round cake. Um, the crumb coat, which you'll notice I've made a little bit thicker than normal so you can see the pink colour behind our ruffles um, and to do all of the outside. So make sure you've got enough and we'll get started. So we're going to take a disposable piping bag. We've got our coupler which is used so that we can clean our tip, we can change our tip and it also stops it from breaking and bursting through the piping bag as easily. I've got a 104 piping tip uh, which is used to create petals, roses and in this case the ruffle. I've also got some scissors to cut our piping bag and I'm using a spat. If you don't have one of these, you can use um, a ruler, anything nice and straight. Um, we just want to show you some tips and tricks today of how to make the ruffle cake really easy and really simple. And one of them is working out how big to make each ruffle and to make sure that they're all perfect. So I use this to mark out all of our cake. That's the first thing we're going to do. So we've gotten a nice solid coat on our cake so that we can't see any of the crumbs and that poking through. We're going to come along, rest this right here so it's nice and level, give a little bit of an indent into the cake itself and then come along about the same size as what we want a ruffle to be. Make another mark and we're going to follow that all the way around the cake, just marking out a good centimetre or half an inch or so. You want them to be all fairly consistent in size and that way we know how big to make all of our ruffles and we know that it's going to come out perfectly. So we're going to take our piping bag, our coupler which we unscrew. I place the first part into the bag before I cut it. Push it as far up as it will go. So we know that we want to cut it somewhere in this spacing right when it starts. So I'm going to push this back down away from me, give a cut, place our piping tip over the top, the second part of our coupler and screw that on nice and tightly. We don't want that going anywhere. Now the key thing is don't put too much buttercream into your piping bag. Um, for one, it makes it harder to hold on to. Um, it also makes it harder to squeeze the piping th um, through and that means that your hands will get much more tired than what they will if you've got a little bit. So we're going to push that all the way down. Give it a squeeze to make sure it's starting. Now you can either hold a piping bag by wrapping it around your index finger, which is to lay it flat curve it around and through or if you're more comfortable give a pinch, twist a couple of times and you're ready to go. The key with this is to make sure that you have your piping bag and your tip facing the correct way. So I'll wrap that up. We're going to make sure that if we had our hand up here we've got big bottom girl down which means that the big section of the pe uh, petal tip is facing downwards and the small part is facing upwards. So if you were holding your hand nice and straight like this, that's the position that it would be in. Now what we're going to do is actually bring it down towards our cake. We're going to rest the bottom bit, which is the bigger part, against our surface and right up against the cake. We're going to start on one side, apply some pressure and slowly lift up as you go. You want to just let it fall, so you want to be up a little bit higher than the piping that's coming out. Nice slow movements and the key is to make sure that you go all the way to the top and over. You don't want to have it where you've stopped short because the, the thing with that is that you'll end up with a bit of a line that you'll see all the way around where the sides have come up and the top has gone over but they haven't quite met. So find a side um, that works for you. I'm going to work in this direction so I'm going to go away from 
my previous one and work towards it. Slowly working your way up. It takes a fair bit of pressure to get all the way to the top, but you don't want to rush it or it'll get more of a zigzag look rather than the soft falling ruffles. There. Now if something happens and you end up with a line that isn't quite straight, what you want to do is slowly bring it back over the next couple of ruffles. You don't want to do a severe change to go all the way up to being in line. You'll notice things where it goes from really big to really small or vice versa, but you won't notice a gradual change to correct itself. So if something happens and it doesn't go right, you can try and peel off one of these ruffles, but it can be a little bit tricky. So the key is not to stress out and just to slowly work towards getting back over maybe one or two lines rather than straight away. So we're going to keep going. It's really important to get the last few rows, especially that last row, done right. gets a little bit harder when you're on the last few to not touch the edges of the ones you've done. You can start to feel them getting closer and closer. There we go. Okay, now for our final one, we want to make sure that our piping tip is exceptionally clean. Basically a bit like a game of operation where you can't touch either side or it tends to create streaks. So, we're going to be leaning forward a little bit more before we were touching up against the cake. Now you can see we can't do that anymore. So we're going to be pulling out just a little bit and just going smaller than the space is. You're trying to avoid both sides at this stage. There we go. So that way you're always going to have a back of a cake, but you don't have to necessarily have the back look any different to the rest. So try and stay nice and uh, far away from your last two. Um, try and squeeze that last layer in, and then you're ready to do the top. So when we do our top, we're going to be doing um, an action that we call running dog. And it's basically trying to travel around fairly quickly with your piping tip. So again, make sure that your piping tip has the bigger section at the bottom like a teardrop and the skinnier section at the top. And we're just going to lean ourselves down over the cake. I'm going to pull it in just a bit so I can reach. And we're going to go almost to the edge. Don't start back here. You want to hide all of those little endings that you've had. So we're going to be working in a circular motion up and down, up and down just like waves of the ocean going round and round. Turn it, you can stop and start, that's fine. But you want to get the motion of, of writing really quickly basically. Pull it down, keep travelling, trying to keep it at a slight angle so it's not going straight out. And what we do is we've got a full layer now. We're going to bring it in. I don't like it where you can see seams. So I don't start and finish in the same spot of the cake every time. I like to mix it up a little bit so that you never know where the beginning and where the end is. Same sidewards motion. Turning your cake from time to time. As you get better at this, you'll be able to turn your Lazy Susan or turntable around so that you have less beginnings and less ends. There we go and we'll just keep working in. And you can see how as you get closer the turns become a little bit more severe so just do a couple of strokes and then turn it really starts to look like a little bit like a flower petals on top as well as ruffles. It's really quite pretty. A few more turns. And the key is the last couple. So just go straight up, down, 
and up down like that and that way you've got a nice finished off centre and that's it that's the ruffle cake so um, as long as you mark it all out correctly use a spatula um, a scraper or a ruler to mark and score your cake so that you feel comfortable with how large each ruffle is going to be um, that's a really key thing for making it work and making it look pretty um, and then just basically get your 104 tip pipe all the way around, um, take a breather occasionally. This is a lot of piping, especially for a beginner to do. So you might want to do the outside and then do the top. Um, and the top is just basically keeping it nice and loose and soft. And you've got a beautiful petal cake on top um, and the ruffles on the side. Mm -hmm.